You are most welcome back. This is Hello Nigeria, and we are about to continue our green discussion. Now, earlier on, when we were speaking with Desmond Majakudumi, we did say that because of what happened, the events over the weekend, we thought it was very important and crucial for us to have a look at that and have that in focus for our show this afternoon. Now, to speak to us further on achieving a green economy, we have with us the CEO and managing partner, Swift Think Technologies, as well as a convener of the Edge series. Mr. Ayola Jolayemi is our guest this afternoon. Nice to have welcome. you on the show, Mr. Thank Ayola you so much, Benga. Thank you so much, Aya, for Thank you very much well. indeed Thank for you. coming. Thank you. Now, you're the convener of the Edge series. It's, it's a platform for students to get mentorship and also listen to great speakers to put them in the right way and uh, also help develop their business minds. But this year, the theme is different. You're looking at the environment, yeah. and it's as, I mean, we can't stress how important uh, that is. I was looking at images of flooding over the weekend, and I saw a lot of garbage in Sule. I'm sure you've seen yeah, that viral that. picture. And I was thinking to myself, all this waste could turn to wealth, and I believe that's one of the one reasons of the why you're here today. Exactly. Thank you so much once mm. again. Yeah. The problem we have in the country right now is because people don't have enough information. And when they do have information, they don't act on this information. Mm. Uh, one of our speakers mentioned very clearly that as of today, we have a 40% post-harvest waste in agriculture. And that, that, evolved, that, that comes to 9.7 trillion naira. That's 40% of what we yes. produce is yes. what, waste. We're never talking about planting new stuff. We're talking about post-harvest post -harvest waste. They've planted, they've harvested. Between time of harvest and end users, you have 40% wasted. We're losing 9.7 We're losing 9.7 trillion naira every year. And this is not just a top of the head. It was researched by mm. one of the big four. So we're we talking about huge resources we're wasting and we're losing. And we're complaining that there is no job. We're complaining that you know, so there's no more white-collar jobs. Every color is now black. <laughs> so until you get to the point where you understand that there are opportunities mm. lying everywhere, yeah. we will not get to the point of liberating this country from the shackles of poverty. All right, now, that's a very interesting thought, liberating people from the shackles of poverty. How can, how can we do that by achieving, by you know, embracing a green economy, a greener economy? Mm, great. Um, first and foremost, I think where we have to start from is actually imbibing discipline. Because I saw the, um, the pictures and the videos that went out from the, from the lake. I actually experienced mm. a lucky one myself. And then I also saw the pictures from the mainland one. And I said to myself, there is a problem. And that's because people are very indisciplined. How can you throw garbage into the same drainage you want to have water pass mm. through when there is water, when it's rain or flood? Now, so the first thing is discipline. Second is being able to understand that there is a value chain that happens from when you pick that bottle of whatever it is, the drink you're taking or the food you're, or the wrap of that food, till the next cycle of a new production, there is a value chain that can be maximized if we do the right thing. So someone can make a job by picking up garbage. Somebody else makes a job by ensuring that those garbage gets the right person that would recycle. Someone recycles that and someone gets that back to the manufacturer. Someone gets to the manufacturer and someone can actually advertise that whole process as his own job. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a marketer, I'm an advertiser, I'm a digital strategy. So this value chain is whole, is enormous, but people just don't want to be disciplined, to sit back and look critically at what is on ground and see how we can make the most of it. We see that there's no job, there's no job, and we don't want to do anything. Why did you decide to focus on the green economy for this year's Edge Series? Now, Benga, you, you know very well that one of the things that we, we don't do is that we don't, take, we don't do things by chance. The, the business we run is, an, is, a, is a research, a project management mm. company, so we do a lot of data gathering. So we saw that, well, we've done communication, we've dealt with driving a digital economy, so, and each of these topics, we've, we've dealt about messaging because people say, oh, I, I went to pitch my idea, I went to pitch my business, nobody's looking at me, nobody's talking to me. There, is, there probably will be a disconnect between what you're selling and what, mm. you, what you're, the person is hearing. So we looked at that and I said, okay, now the country is on a, on, 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 on a, on a nosedive, but, I, I mean, in, in some way. How do we ensure that we can open up the opportunities in the value chain, not only in agriculture? but in sustainable businesses, in mm. sustainable development, businesses that have sustainability as their watchword. And that's why we looked at And we're not doing this for this year alone. Based on the strategy we have on ground, we're running this for three years. We're running this for 2017, 
2018 and 2019 to ensure that every single you person... You drum it into the... Exactly. Yeah. Not just drumming it in now, but ensuring that at the end of the day, we can build a business for young people. We can build an economy that at the end of the day, everybody sees it and says, no, this is sustainable. Right. This can, can stand the test of time. Because we would always have waste. Mm. We would always eat. We would always go to the farm. We would always travel. There's always something that would take us. It would never, it go, would out never go out of fashion. All right, so let's quickly do a quick SWOT analysis of what okay. you propose. The okay. strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats okay. of what you're talking about. Because it mm. seems like such a fantastic Okay. Um, you know, um, project, but what are the things you have found out to be, I mean, you've okay. we mentioned we've, the strengths yes, already, but that. what are the weaknesses, so what are the challenges that um, would affect this from being a reality? Now, the, fir the first major um, issue we have is environmental factors. Mm. And environmental in the sense that there is a big gap in terms of perception. Now, our, our society has made some things uh, untouchable, they make you feel like you're not successful mm. when you're doing a few, a few things. I shared if, it, 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 I mean, this, this story with a few guys last week. There's a girl I know who Monday to Friday, she's in Isain, you know, your state, packing charcoal. And on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, she's in town driving her big CRV. Wow. And you're wondering, what does she do? Mm. But mm. because you don't have an idea that on Monday to Friday, she's in Isain, packing charcoal, and she exports two 40-foot containers to China every month wow Knowledge so you so you see her you see her you see you see her on monday she's probably covered in in dust of so, and suit and on on friday she's all sassy all looking fabulous in and her you're, nice car and, it, you're thinking, and you're like wow. oh my god i want so there's a there's an environmental issue that which is a major weakness we have very major weakness number two is access to information young people don't want to read i have Tons of them based on what we do at the Edge Series. For four years, I've interacted with close to 55,000 young people in four years. And they don't want to read. So they, they, they say that, that talk, or the, the, whole, the old parlance that says, you want to hide a thing from a black man. I was, that was yeah, just put talking to my mind, put in a book. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's true. true. It's the truth. They don't want to read. So it's all hidden and nobody wants. So that's the second weakness that we have right now. Third is our finance or financing system in Nigeria. I mean, I had the privilege to do a few things out of the country. And I know how someone who has a very, let me use the word, wacky idea, just walks into the bank. It comes to life. It comes it, to life. I was watching a few days ago, some chap in China building some exoskeleton, having access to 300 million US dollars for experiments. Not even that they will go to the well, market. Well, you know what our people are doing with their uh, money? <laughs> they are going to one night club on Adjust. <laughs> what's Adi 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 uh, yeah, what's that Zumba. street now? <laughs> Ozumba. To go and turn up at night. You, so we you, don't even have investors. Exactly. We don't have angel funding. Yeah. We don't have people who are going to you know, be mm. willing because people are hiding exactly. their wealth. Exactly. Yeah, now, now let's uh, look <laughs> at the Edge series. Okay. It's happening this Saturday. This weekend, yes, on Saturday. Uh, uh, what should we expect from it? As always, one of the things that we place premium on at the Edge Series is that our sessions are instructional. And that's because, yes, there's so much inspiration already in town. People already, uh, you know, making themselves happy and, you know, doing all sorts of things. But we're looking at instructional sessions. Sessions that would ensure that every single person that comes has something tangible that can help them move. Great. So our speakers are all people that are on the field. What are your speakers? We have Femi Oye, who is the CEO of SME Funds. Yep. He makes cellulose from water hyacinth. So at some point you saw the water, yep. water yeah. was cleared out. You were wondering where, they, the where they went to on the lagoon. Uh, it pretty much went to his factory in Wonderful. Ikorodu. So People so, are making money out of what you are despising. Exactly. So he makes that from sawdust as well. And he produces cellulose. And that is used in um, powering local stoves. And he's, it's all around the, the world. We have Dr. Omotayo Dairo, who was, who was an old man of 60, 65, and started his business at 55. And in, 10, in between those 10 years, he has become a world technology innovator, World Economic Forum Award winner, US ADF, wow. US, I mean, all of that. What so it's he, never too late to start. It's never too late. So it's a, it, we have the young, we have the old. Oh. And what he's done is that he's produced plants that run on biomass. So, for instance, you have your palm kernel shell. You break the mm -hmm. nut. You're wondering where, where do you want to dispose the, the shell. 
He runs plants. And you know, the <laughs> interesting thing you're saying is that we have a lot of this waste Trust in Nigeria. Trust me, it's so, amazing. Like you said, it's money so the we're throwing away. Chain is, yes, it's, there's it's money lost. in there. So where, where is this happening? It's happening at the Shell Hall Moson Center on Saturday, 29th of July, by 9 a.m. Okay. And we start at 9 a.m. sharp. We have been able to help young people by getting uh, partners to put buses on the road. Fantastic. So it's a free event. So, I mean, you don't have an excuse. It's a free event, one. Secondly, you have partners who have said, okay, you know what, folks in Lasso, in Unilag, in Yabatek, in Ikorodu who want, to, who want to come for this event, let's put buses on the road for them. So Beautiful. just, How just can go, people get bus information? So you will just go to www.theedge.com.ng right. or follow us on Instagram and, or even just my, my, my personal Fantastic. handle. Fantastic. I, I need to applaud you for the great work you're doing for yes. young people. They are often abandoned, yeah. although they say they are the leaders of tomorrow, but a lot of people <laughs> neglect them and... Year after year, you give them this wonderful platform we have to for free. We have to continue doing that. And one well thing I'd like to also mention quickly is the fact that corporate Nigeria needs to focus on developmental projects. Enough, we, we've, we have enough of you guys working on entertainment projects. I'm not against it. But not to dancing and musicals. I'm not against it. We're slowly like becoming that. And now they've now moved to movies. So it's <laughs> now concentrated exactly. on, on entertainment. But I'm do you only... think it's because they paid their price as well? They've well, worked really, well, really hard they have to get worked, here. They have worked really hard mm -hmm. to get here. But the thing is, we cannot shy away from the fact that we have to open up the economy across various yeah. uh, aims, uh, discipline lines. It has to be across different lines. Entertainment is doing well. Comedy, music, and the films are doing very well. Let us also focus on the people doing things that have to do with building technology, working on it, waste management, and all, it has to be around all of that. So right. that would be what I would think uh, should be focused on also. All right, wonderful. It's Thank been you. an absolute pleasure having you Thank on you the much. show. Thank you Mr. Ayola Jalai. You can see the uh, clip on the... Ed on the event happening, yeah. yeah, on Saturday, exactly. I mean, I mean, this looks really, really exciting, and I love the fact that there's no age bracket. No. And I'm it's happy that Steve Babayko, a record label owner, is yes, there. So is it'll there. be interesting to know the kind of questions that will be thrown at him. Oh, I see Mazi Okonu. <laughs> yes. His wife just came second. Yes, he came second at the Chivas Ventures, yeah. yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So you have a powerful... Uh, <laughs> panel there, uh, array of speakers yes, that started. Much. If you're going to pay for this event, you'll be paying top dollars. So I really yes. appreciate you. Thank you so and, much. And uh, Corporate Nigeria, please listen. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank All right, you. ladies and gentlemen, we have been speaking with Ayola Jola Yemi, the CEO and managing partner of Swift Think Limited and also the convener of the Edge Series, fourth edition taking place on Saturday. If you'd like to follow them, follow them on social media platforms. It was on your TV screen. We will also mention it at the end of the show, so please stay tuned. Right now, we're going to a quick break, and Nandi is waiting behind to tell us what Arsenal and Arsene Wenger are up to. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.